Welcome to Uncover, the show dedicated to exploring what we need to know about God, the enemy, and ourselves to win the war for our destiny. Your host, Dr. Peggy Karlosky, psychologist, writer, and speaker, admits that there's no new truth, only that that hasn't been uncovered. And now, here's your host. Hello and welcome to Uncover. I've just talked last week about how really the challenge of life is how to encourage ourselves. I was emphasizing how living in a fallen world, we're all going to need to be encouraged. And since we're with ourselves all the time, we need to know how to encourage ourselves. And being uh, in private practice and doing counseling, I talk to people on a regular basis about pain in their life. And so many times when I ask, how do you encourage yourself? I get this deer in a headlight look sometimes, like they're not sure, they've never really thought about, well, how do I do that? Maybe they don't know, or maybe they encourage themselves, but I've, they've never figured out really what it is that they really do. Many just admit they don't know how to encourage themselves. And so in picking up on that subject, because it's so critical to live an effective life, I go back and dig a little more nuggets from the Word. You know, sometimes if you've been hurting and maybe you feel so devastated in your situation, or let's say you have been persecuted, or you're dealing with a situation that is so perplexing that you feel very alone. It just seems like most of us, maybe everyone, at some time in their life has felt very alone in whatever their struggle was. Like no one quite understood what they were going through. I was talking to a lady recently that her husband has a a pretty um, progressive disorder and it is just heartbreaking and she was depressed and really in a lot of pain watching the decline of her husband and feeling powerless over it and how different it was making their lifestyle and and as she was as I was talking to her repeatedly she would make the comment you just don't understand you don't understand and I thought well no I couldn't really understand and while none of us can say somebody else understands exactly we do know that the Lord does But what I have found is that sometimes when we feel like someone else at least feels similar to me, it's not that it takes our pain away, but it may at least just give a little little flavor of relief to know that we're not alone. I think all of us want to feel understood and feel like somebody at least understands our pain, even if they can't just take it away. So in our quest to encourage ourselves, I think we've got some wonderful examples of the Lord given us in the Word of people that when we read about some of their experiences and struggles, we know they felt some of what we may be feeling. I was reading in 2 Corinthians, the fourth chapter, and I was reading where Paul was talking about What an honor it was to have the ministry of the gospel. What an honor it was to try to be a light in this dark world. And yet, he didn't mince words. He let it know that it also involved some real suffering. And as he was talking about his own suffering, I thought, you know, how could that be encouraging? But I guess I thought about, again, people who are hurting and struggling and feel very alone like everybody else is going on with their life and they're doing well except that person, for them to go, wow, there's other people who love the Lord who were persecuted and hurt deeply, and Paul's one of them, to just know we're in that company, we're not alone. In fact, recently I was talking to someone in a counseling session who was in just a very dark place, felt very persecuted, unfair situations, 
and just felt very alone in it. Looked around and saw other people, um, the age that this person was and how their lives were so different and just felt very disconnected as if, I don't know, like they didn't have the benefit of their peers and how they were living their life. And as, that, as I listened to them, I knew I couldn't change their circumstances. And yet, I so wanted them to realize, you aren't alone. You do. There are other people who have similar, they may not be exact, but we've all, somebody has felt the rejection and persecution and fear that this person felt. No, that didn't take their pain away. But when I could start sharing like that, you could see at least a little glimmer of relief. I had another I was actually on the phone with that was sharing some of her pain. And when I also talked about some other people, and yeah, they said, you know, you could tell that they didn't feel like the total outcast. So when we read of Paul, we read of heartache in his life, and yet he saw what an honor it was to be a light in the world. One of those people I was talking with that was sharing their pain talked about how hard it was at their workplace. Some of you listening may feel it's so hard to work where you work because of some of the darkness, some of the backbiting, some of the gossip, whatever it is, that it just is hard to try to maintain a good attitude in that workplace. Some of you, it may be in your marriage or in your family, but you just feel how I could be so much better if I was in a healthier environment. And yet, we find that Paul emphasized we are to be a light in a dark place. Most of us, you know, if we live in a, in a real unhealthy, spiritually dark workplace, we think, oh God, get me out of here, get me with some Christian people where it'll feel different. And even though I'm not saying I blame people for wanting that, at the same time, where is the light needed in the darkness? And yet, that may be very hard for that one trying to be a light. I'm going to read a little bit from chapter 4. Again, this is 2 Corinthians. Therefore, since we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we do not lose heart. But we have renounced the hidden things of shame, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. Now, what he's talking about there is, you know, he was saying, since I'm in this ministry, I'm not going to lose heart. That when you've really come to know Christ, you try to remove yourself from a lifestyle of sin that you've been in with God's help. And see, during this time, Paul, some false teachers were trying to accuse Paul of being a hypocrite and saying he's a phony and he's a hypocrite. And yet, and that he was twisting the, the word of God. That wasn't true. Paul instead was saying, I'm trying to handle the word of God honestly and to manifest the truth. But we're going to see in verse 3, sometimes the gospel is veiled to those who are lost. We read in verse 3, but even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing, whose minds the God of this age is blinded, who do not believe, lest the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is in the image of God, should shine on them. For we do not preach ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves your bondservants for Jesus' sake. For it is the God who commanded light to shine out of darkness, who is shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Some of you listening may find that you're so tired trying to be that light when it feels so hard in the dark place you're in. You may feel that you're persecuted, that you're made fun of, or that when you're trying to do the right thing, those around you do the wrong thing. I was talking to someone recently about this too, that it's so hard to hold ourselves accountable to do right when we feel it seems so fair to retaliate. There's people maybe that are lying to us or are doing the wrong thing, and in our human nature is to, to just respond accordingly, tit for tat. At the same time, to be called to be a light in a dark world sometimes brings suffering. 
And sometimes we don't feel like up to the task. You know, I wonder if Paul ever felt that way, that he feels weak. We know he did because he talked about that, about feeling so weak and trying to get the thorn in the flesh removed. And over and over, one of the messages Paul gives is that, wow, when we're weak, Christ shines. Some of you feel weak in your marriages. You may feel incapable of dealing with that difficult child. Or you may be in a workplace where you just feel like you just cannot keep a good attitude there. Or you may not be able to feel like you're going to just smother underneath financial pressures. I don't know what you're facing. But I do know that we are given a message that not only we're to be a light, but it's an honor to serve Him and that He will carry us. Because we read in, in verse 7, we're going to talk about some of how Paul felt. But we have this treasure. Remember, the knowledge of Jesus Christ, that's a treasure, in earthen vessels. Talking about us. That the excellence of the power may be of God and not of us. We are hard-pressed on every side, yet not crushed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Struck down, but not destroyed. Always carrying about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our body. For we who live are always delivered to death for Jesus' sake. And the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our mortal flesh. So, then death is working in us, but life in you. You know, Paul goes on to talk about not losing heart. He's given us some real messages of how to encourage ourselves as he goes on into this chapter and saying, you know what, even though it's an affliction now, but it's for a moment, there's something great working in us, and not to lose heart, because our outward man is perishing, but the inward is being renewed day by day. So I look at this, and I'm thinking, some of you may feel discouraged. I had someone recently saying, but I'm just so tired. I just can't hang on like this. Some of you may not feel so downtrodden, but all of us need to be encouraged. That's where the Word of God provides our encouragement to know, and other Christians who are willing to speak up. You can encourage someone else to say, listen, I know what it feels like to be rejected, or I, I know what it feels like to be debilitated with fear. Whatever your struggle is, it gives you a platform to encourage someone else. That's what Paul did. He used his own struggles as his platform to encourage others for generations to come who he would never know. But his words would encourage, wow, he felt like I did, perplexed, persecuted, but not forsaken. He encourages us that we are have an honor to be a light in this dark world and not to lose heart. That's not easy to do when it just keeps on and on. That's why it's so important for us to get encouragement from other people. You may be in a situation... I know some people who, they really don't have a good support system. They don't have a healthy, mature, emotionally and spiritually healthy person close to them. That's an encourager. If you don't, I encourage you, start seeking it. Asking God, Lord, help me. Bring those people in my life that we can encourage each other. But we got to do our part. Sometimes they're not just going to come up and knock on the door. We may have to... Take those steps. Get into a woman's Bible study. Get into a church and take those steps to try to get to know someone. Many times <clears throat> people are uncomfortable and say, I, I don't want to do that. I even had a gentleman recently and he was like, he's got some social anxiety of, I, I'm just so uncomfortable. But are we willing to do the uncomfortable to get the prize? Sometimes if we're only going to do what's comfortable, we're going to miss out on so much encouragement in our life. We're going to miss out on treasures and support that we could have if we step out of our comfort zone. To go ahead and get involved with other believers, even though we may feel uncomfortable or we may come in with wounds of rejection, I encourage you, don't let people define your worth. That is one of the greatest disappointments in our lives. That's one of the greatest ways to, block, to hinder our encouragement is letting other people define us. 
Sometimes, some people get overinflated, but many times we have wounds of feeling left out or uninvited. And like I've said many times on this show, if you have some real profound wounds, you can be almost guaranteed your perceptions about rejection will be distorted. You will see rejection when it's not even there. That person who says they can't go to lunch with you and you interpret it as something against you when they just were busy. We're going to be prone to misinterpret if we have wounds of rejection. On the other hand, all of us are going to face real rejection. How do you encourage yourself? Paul's a good one to read about. To know he was persecuted and rejected sometimes by his own people in his church. However, he tells us the Lord will never leave us, forsake us. And he tells us the hope is in him. That we're to be a light to those others. I can't do that without the Holy Spirit. Can you? To ask him, fill me, help me. And I need the word to encourage me. As I've said before, I think that that's not only one of the greatest treasures in life, to know how to encourage ourselves. It's also one of the greatest gifts we can give others, to encourage them and to teach them how to encourage themselves. So I'm asking you, practice. Get in the Word. Look up those passages that encourage you. Be around other people that are encouraging. Start making those statements to yourself. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. That He knows I'm weak, but He loves me, and He will strengthen me, and He's gifted me. Say those encouraging words over yourself, even when those waves of critical thoughts come. Do we fight them? I'm asking you, fight them. Fight a good fight. Because we need to be encouraging to ourselves if we're going to encourage others in this world that we're supposed to be a light to. I thank you for listening. And Lord, I'm praying right now for all of those listening and that you will have ones check in to listen, Lord. Because I want to speak your word, Lord, that you wanted us to be a people of encouragement. You wanted us to be a people like Paul talked about that could be persecuted, but no, we're not forsaken. That we could be, be harmed, but not complete despair. That we were encouraged in you. I pray that for those listening, that, Lord, they will go after their encouragement and they will not settle for a life that does not involve encouragement. I know we're going to have pain, but, God, help us to hook our sight on. You meant us to be encouraged. I praise you and I ask you to encourage those listening. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, and I look forward to next week on Uncover.